video will be dedicated to Android Warder and will be actually divided into two parts. Uh, during the first one, we will be discussing uh, not the Android, but how it is used, uh, what are the particular uh, interesting things of Android Warder design. And the second part will be uh, dedicated to promoting our uh, small library that facilitates its usage. So uh, let's start with a lovely triangle. In Android framework, we have a Warder class that can be used to represent some asynchronous operation that you want to perform. Actually, it occurs Warder, and as a result, you can think about this like in some operation that lost your data. We also have another class that is called Warder Callbacks, and is dedicated to separation of your operation results handling from this operation execution. As a result, your order can be retained during configuration changes and not recreating when your activity is recreated. Uh, and your order callbacks will be attached to already existing order and you will get results from already running operation. Thanks. And uh, the top of this triangle is formed by a class that is called Lorder Manager. Lorder Manager performs all the magic of this, attaching and detaching the Lorder callbacks, and managing your Lorders and managing your Lorder results. So if we take a look at how this API, Lord API, is used, we will learn that uh, interface between interference of this, interaction of these classes is a bit complicated. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, things that you have to keep in mind when you work with Android Lord, and we'll try to analyze what are they. For example, when you start using a Lorde, you will always have to maintain a set of unique integer identifiers that will uniquely identify what operation is running so that the system will be able to attach uh, your callback to operation with this ID so that you have to bind your callbacks uh, to a order with this ID and you have to provide this ID when you create a Lorde and uh, correspondingly when you uh, handle the results. When you implement your Lorde callbacks, you have to implement three methods. The first one creates your asynchronous separation, I mean that Lorde instance. The second one handles the results of this asynchronous separation. And the third one, the most, uh, with the most interesting name, actually serves for releasing any data that was loaded by that Lorde. You actually do not have to release this data because uh, by design, a Lorde instance is uh, responsible for, for example, closing a cursor or closing a file, closing an internet connection that was used to perform your asynchronous separation. But at this point, you have to get rid of any references to that, those data that were well loaded and probably stored in your client of this Lorde. Because at this point, you are not allowed to use this data anymore. And uh, uh, Lorde Manager is... Uh, responsible for correctly treating all the states. So the basic idea that when you have to load some data, for example, in when your activity is displayed on the screen and you want some data to build your UI, you can invoke, for example, init loader method, providing your loader ID and your callbacks. So the most trivial case, the most uh, probably documented case, but what happens if you, for example, want to create your custom order? Then uh, you dive into order documentation more deeply and find that there are few implementation of Lorde uh, abstract class. You will find async task order and cursor order. But uh, then probably thinking about what you have to do, you will face with the problem that there are too many different methods that you have to implement, and you do not actually understand why you have to do that. So to uh, be uh, accurate, we have to say that Lorde is responsible for uh, triggering your operation execution at some point of time. And Lorde Manager 
tells the loader that operation should start. So it does it with the on start loading method. And with that method, your loader should think whether it has already some data loaded. If it is, it should just deliver the data to callbacks. If it is not, it should start the operation. Then uh, loader manager can say loader stop. This means that uh, at this point, your clients probably are not any more interested in uh, data, uh, in displaying new data. For example, if your activity will go to background, you will be asked to stop uh, delivering new loaded data because it doesn't make sense because nobody will see it. But at this stage, you may continue to observe these data changes. And for example, if you observe this data change on the next on start loading, you will reload this data and deliver new fresh data. Another state is when your loader is abandoned. This means that this loaded data will not be used by the client. At this point, you should not start any loading operations. And the last state is when loader is reset. At this point, you have to completely get rid of anything and uh, you, have, you, want, you are going to think that uh, your order instance will not be used by any client anymore. So actually, it is a bit complicated, uh, but uh, you, know, you do not ha have to hate this. Uh, in one of the recent uh, articles, Martin Fowler said that it was very uh, easy to hate the code that you was not written without understanding the circumstances it was written in. And uh, why this word implementation is, word interface is so complicated, is directly connected to uh, complex activity lifecycle. And actually, it's much easier than activity lifecycle because the word manager actually hides from your word a lot of details of activity lifecycle. And it just commands you to start, stop, reset, cancel, or anything. And you do not think about pausing, starting, recreating, post-creating, or anything. That is why uh, Word is designed in this way, as far as I understand, because I'm not their designer. But let's now take a look at the situation when you succeeded in your custom Word implementation and want to use a Word in a bit uh, not so documented way and, for example, perform your data loading on demand. Not in, uh, you want to invoke your need loader method uh, not in on create of uh, your activity, but, for example, when your button is pressed and at this point you have to start loading some data. Then if you imagine a situation that is this uh, point when your data is being loaded, your activity is recreated, you want to be attached to this run operation and get your data back. In this case, you will have to deal with more complexity and save this loading state. Because you still have, uh, in order to get that loading data, you have to bind your callbacks to a loader. If you, this uh, will not happen until you explicitly invoke a init loader method. In order to know that you have to invoke this method, you have to keep this state. That is why you ha when you press on that button, you have to save your state that now I'm loading data. And then when your activity is created, you have to understand that, oh, loading is in progress, and I have to bind my callbacks directly here in order to uh, get newly refreshed data. But you do not have uh, do it, but you mustn't do it on this on the first activity creation because you want to start your loading data only when button is pressed. So another variant, if you, for example, custom load is not used in more undocumented way, and it doesn't actually load your data, but you want to uh, leverage this loader manager complexity and functionality just to retain loading operation when your activity is recreated, and you want to use a loader to, for example, send data somewhere, uh, submit your, for example, order, or anything, you have to think about another uh, case that loaded data is cached when it is possible. And to avoid this, you have to invoke another method, which is called restart loader, in order to ensure that 
uh, word from the data from the previous used word will not be used instead, and you will be getting a correct your, uh, submission result. So you will see even more critics about words. For example, Mark Murphy this uh, last spring uh, published an article where he was complaining about word design. He was uh, talking about uh, that word abstraction is broken and uh, actually it's used only cursor word implementation. Uh, the main points were that uh, first of all you have to work around some word manager optimizations. For example, when you deliver new data, you ha it has to be represented by a new object. In other case, this new data will not be actually delivered to your callbacks. And, uh, uh, that is why his word that was loading shared preferences was not working, because shared preferences also is always the single instance, and it was not able to deliver you uh, to invoke callbacks when some preference is changed. Is changed. By I personally cannot agree with all his arguments, and as for me, word abstraction is rather flexible, uh, although it is rather complex. And, uh, uh, of course, we have to keep in mind that word optimization, but uh, an example of loading shared preferences is not the best example of word usage, just in case, because uh, uh, shared preferences is not designed in that way. And, uh, as for me, the main uh, uh, drawback in word design is the inability to track errors handling, because uh, when you take a look at the onboard finish method, you will never get uh, an idea whether operation is successful or not. You have to pass this success flag or anything in your loading operation results. And uh, loading manager doesn't provide with some API that uh, is thinking about errors handling. So thinking about a flexible loading uh, abstraction and uh, taking into account uh, some points that we do not like a lot in Word API design, uh, we decided to still leverage its functionality in order to retain instances during configuration changes and create a library that is called Enros Crossing. Yeah, that's it. So what is it, what it does? Let's take a look at a simple example uh, imagining that we are implementing a Twitter client. In such case, we'll, uh, pro we'll describe some operations object. This operations object will provide you with uh, all asynchronous operations you want, for example, to perform on activity. Let's imagine that we have two operations that loads tweets and posts a new message to your feed. Uh, you can express these operations describing and annotated methods. You describe an operation that loads some data with load annotation and operation that submits some data with send annotation. You can use, uh, you can create your asynchronous operation just using a callable interface. Then you use a generated operator class. This operator class can be used in order to trigger your operation and it will contain uh, methods that uh, match your operation names, so that in previous slides we were describing uh, operations with methods and they had names, and this operator will have uh, the same names for triggering these operations. So that when you want to trigger your operation, you just uh, invoke this method. And you can subscribe to this operation results with the rather fluent API, so that when you uh, want to get results of loading operation, you just type when loading twist is finished, you attach your callbacks. You are recommended to do this as soon as you, for example, have a reference to a view that has to display this data. Uh, so, for example, when your activity is created, you create your views that will display data, and at this point of time, you can create these callbacks that get uh, loading operation results and bind your views to this data. And uh, another piece uh, is uh, triggering the operations. 
you can decide at what point of time you want to trigger it, whether uh, operation should be triggered, for example, when activity is created or, for example, when a button is pressed. So as a result, you get this Fluent API for subscriptions. And the most uh, powerful thing that we find in our library is the possibility to use reactive extensions. You can describe your asynchronous operations like a method that provides observable. And uh, after you describe this operation, operator will provide, you, will provide you with another method that will allow you to subscribe to an observable that is backed by a order that is invo invoking your observable that was provided by that operations object. So as a result, if you compare that library triangle with loader manager, loader, and loader callbacks, it is transferred to a bit simplified uh, triangle where your callbacks are not further responsible for creating the operation. If you decouple this, and uh, in uh, as the bottom line, you get uh, you can avoid word IDs management. You do not have to think further about uh, the uniqueness and anything because your operations are uniquely identified by method names. Then you can uh, use Fluent API for subscriptions. You can use uh, Good API for errors handling because uh, uh, if any exception is thrown by your operation that is expressed, for example, by a callable, if this exception will be delivered to your callbacks in actions that you uh, defined describing uh, your callbacks. And of course, leverage your Java and do not think about subscription and unsubscription in your activity lifecycle callbacks. So it's actually this it. Thank you for your attention. And I will be thankful for any questions. No questions? Five grimness for question. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I do not have money with me. <laughs> What are the alternatives we have uh, except loaders? Uh, you have, you have a lot of alternatives. Actually, uh, all this, uh, uh, what I was talking about, loader helps you to retain uh, your operation execution and bind to it when your activity is recreated. This is the main feature that we are leveraging. But actually, you can do it in your own way. For example, if you imagine that you have an independent, for example, if you uh, uh, speak in terms of Rx Java, uh, you have an independent observable that is uh, not any, in any way connected to your activity, and it just performs some operation and you can subscribe to these results. So in such case, in combination with some published operators, you can create an activity that binds, uh, su that subscribes to that observable in, on start and unsubscribes on, on stop so that uh, any references are not kept when activity is recreated and that instance is restored. With this implementation, we just do not care about activity lifecycle and we completely uh, avoid such calls like uh, uh, subscribe in on start or unsubscribe in on stop. And also we get a nice fluent API for subscriptions. Next question. Actually, my question uh, is similar about alternatives. So loaders are cool, definitely cool. Uh, it's friendly to lifecycle and so on without memory leaks. But I'm wondering if you're familiar with RoboSpies. Yeah. So it works in similar way. And I'm just wondering, uh, because as for me, it uh, looks like more developer friendly. It's more easy to use than loaders with the same uh, piece of functionality. What do you think about? OK. So. If we uh, speak about implementation, RoboSpice is based on an idea of running a service. And uh, uh, when we talk about Warder, uh, Warder in this particular implementation is not uh, uh, supposed to, uh, okay. You can create an asynchronous operation that can be invoked by in any way. So that, for example, 
uh, you can create a warder that does not uh, spawn a new thread and execute some code in this thread, but instead, for example, binds to a service and commands to perform some operation and then get the, those results. But you still can, with the warder, you can avoid those uh, bind on start and unbind on stop because the warder is decoupled from the life cycle. Uh, and uh, Internally at Stunfire, we combine this uh, NROSCAR async uh, uh, with uh, another our tool that is called Goro that uh, invokes operations also in the service. And it has a nice integration so that we command a service to execute it and uh, we bind to already running operations that is running behind the service with the warder. Yeah. 